every single day, an entire barrel full of sunscreen goes into the ocean just around Maui, Hawaii, one person at a time. Furthermore, 14,000 tons of sunscreen go into the ocean each year. This might not seem like a problem at first. After all, it's just sunscreen. But inside many sunscreens are toxic chemicals. Chemicals that are destroying the coral reefs. So why is this important? Our coral reefs are important because they're an integral part of having a healthy ocean ecosystem. Now, coral reefs, they contain the most diverse and valuable ecosystems on the planet. Uh, these reef structures, they, they play a critical role as natural breakwaters, helping to reduce the damaging effects from the pressures of climate change via storms and erosion along our coastlines. They provide habitats and shelter for many marine organisms. In the absence of coral reefs, there would be thousands of marine species without a home and ultimately endanger levels in fish populations. Coral reefs are important for all sorts of things. You know, culturally, they're super important. The coral animal is actually itself um, the foundational species mentioned in the Kumulipu, which is the chant for Hawaiian creation. Native Hawaiians have depended on coral reefs for, you know, years and years and years. They have always fished the coral reefs and they always did it in a sustainable way. In terms of the fishing industry, our healthy coral reefs keep fisheries in business. Reefs are important because they provide food for people, especially people who need or, or they choose to subsist on, quote, the bounty of Moana, the bounty of the ocean. They only cover 1% of the ocean, but they're estimated to be worth nearly tens of billions of US dollars per year. And we certainly can't forget the benefits of our tourist industry where a lot of tourism in Hawaii depends on our natural environment. And coral reefs are often the centerpiece of nature-based tourism. So in reality, coral reefs allow us to reconnect what is truly important. But while I have many cherished memories involving the ocean, I'd be remiss not mentioning the glaring fact that our coral reefs are dying. And the fact is, unless we, and I mean that collectively as we, unless we do something, we're not going to survive. Coral reefs are in danger due to a number of different factors, but one of the biggest threats they face come from chemicals commonly found in sunscreen. Some sunscreens uh, can be harmful because if they contain chemicals like oxybenzone and octanoxate and others, then our coral reefs and other marine life will be damaged. Scientific evidence shows that these chemicals induce coral bleaching, uh, harm and kill coral larvae by creating gross deformities, and also act as an endocrine disruptor. It makes it hard for them to eat. It can cause them to get sick. It puts a lot of stress on them. So then they'll bleach and then they'll end up dying because they can't recover from that. Furthermore, oxybenzone and octanoxid in the marine environment can have detrimental effects on all marine life. Um, it also hurts sea urchins, can damage their immune system, and fish, it actually, we have been seeing it accumulate in tissues. And then when we eat fish, we end up eating the oxybenzone as well. Um, so we're putting it on our skin, putting it in the water, and then ultimately it's coming right back into our bodies. Oxybenzone and octanoxid have detrimental effects on human health as well. For example, these chemicals are linked to causing breast cancer to become more aggressive, polluting breast milk, uh, causing Hirschsprung deformity in newborns. Uh, they're associated with women's uterine diseases, uh, threaten male sexual health, and could promote DNA damage. Now, we're not saying don't use sunscreen. There are other options that are just as effective and a lot safer for you and the environment. We absolutely want everyone to continue to enjoy the sun, our beautiful oceans, but keeping in mind the many ways to remain sun safe and reef safe. We might have noticed there's these reef friendly and reef safe stickers on a lot of sunscreen bottles, but that's not always the best way to pick your sunscreens because there's no real regulations from the FDA on what 
can be put that sticker can be put on so you could put that sticker on a bottle with oxysilate on it so i don't like to use that sticker i actually just will flip the sunscreen over on the back and look at the ingredient list and anything that is zinc based or titanium based but not nanoparticles is going to be a great sunscreen for our reefs and honestly for our skins too the best thing that you can do is just like avoid chemicals and personal care products in general and just wear like a long sleeve rash guard um a hat and like those kinds of just physical sun protection barriers. I also advocate other things like umbrellas, sun shirts, um, just t-shirts, honestly, just maybe staying out of the sun, things like that. The zinc and the titanium are the better options, but there's, we're still putting a lot of stuff in the water that isn't supposed to be there. And then of course, here in Hawaii, keep in mind that pre-pandemic in 2019, we had 10.4 million tourists visiting our islands and beaches. So think about that. Think about the literally tons of harmful chemicals in these sunscreens sliding off the bodies of these tourists into the ocean and basically acting like herbicides and pesticides, poisoning corals and seagrasses, and how this can slowly decimate a marine population over time, basically leading to an ecological disaster. It's up to us to protect our coral reefs. Thankfully, there are things being done to help. The story on how certain sunscreens got banned in Hawaii and why it's important begins many years ago on, on my family beach outings. You know, over the years, I noticed that our ocean waters and marine life were deteriorating greatly. And the more I looked into it, the more I researched, the more I realized that we needed to take action. First, I learned that worldwide, 50% of our coral reefs globally were, were lost as a result of coral bleaching. Second, the main factor that has contributed to the decline of our coral reefs is localized pollution, such as sewage, pesticide runoff, and chemical sunscreens. According to the US National Park Service, more than 6,000 tons of sunscreen end up in Hawaiian waters every single year. And so this is where sunscreen legislation comes into play. It was, the, it was the 2017 legislative session, and there were several oxybenzone related bills that were introduced, but ultimately they all failed. And so after the session, an, an ad hoc coalition of environmental groups and scientists called the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition, the acronym is HIROC, uh, they formed. And I participated in, in the meetings with the group, and it was from those meetings that Senate Bill 2571 was crafted, which would ban the sale of sunscreens containing oxybenzone and octanoxin starting on January 1st, 2019. So I was asked to take the lead on introducing this important piece of legislation. And so when the 2018 session rolled around in January, uh, SB 2571 was born. Now, was it smooth sailing for SB 2571? Not a chance. <laughs> As with all things, there are always different perspectives. Online rumors were flying saying that Senator Gabbard was against sunscreens and he didn't care anything about, about people getting skin cancer. <laughs> and also folks were saying that the police were going to start checking people's tubes of sunscreen on Waikiki to see if they were complying with the law. Those who had opposing views to SB 2571 included groups such as the Personal Care Products Council. So this was a compromise with the cosmetic industry to give them more time to adjust their product line. So SB 2571 was a big step forward for the protection of our coral reefs, marine life, and human health. It was the first law passed not only in this country, but the first in the world to ban sunscreens that contain oxybenzone and octanoxy. It's absolutely what we needed to do, and it's our duty as responsible citizens to ensure the protection of our oceans, our coral reefs, our people's health, and our island paradise, not only for ourselves, but for future generations. Our work is far from over. The coral reefs are still dying. But if we all work together, I believe that we can make a difference. 
So there are many things we can do individually uh, because ultimately this concern requires everyone, Lao Lima, many hands working together to resolve. Buy reef-friendly mineral sunscreens, making sure the ingredients aren't toxic to the corals. Learn about the coral reefs and their amazing biodiversity and unique role they play in the health of our oceans. And the other thing that I think is going to be really important in the coming years is just get involved in your um, legal system, get involved locally, globally, and just advocate for those people that are advocating for the oceans. So it's just, um, you know, little, little things in your everyday life that you can like change that aren't hard to do that are going to benefit the ocean in some way. And we should all learn more about the dangers of chemical sunscreens, about ways to protect our, our oceans and coral reefs. Uh, speak up for nature, share information, and educate our communities. It's good to be aware of once, once everyone has stopped using those chemical sunscreens, like there are other issues at hand that we should focus on too. You know, we absolutely cannot do this alone. It is definitely a Lao Lima project. We all need to do our part and work together to make a difference. Mahalo and aloha. The truth is we need to take action now to protect our dying planet. There are things that are so easy to do that anyone can make a change. The problem is they have to be willing to do it. So let me end with a question for you. Are you willing? to make a difference.